Welcome to the Tired Cast. I am in the middle of a deep insomniac episode, and Dylan is raising two children. And you know what? He's actually raising them. Unlike most men, unlike how I advised, unlike he's walking the beta path, knowing his kids. I voted <laughs> for alpha path. My fucking... Oh, what's the alpha path? You you shake both of their hands first day out of the womb. Say, catch me if you can, motherfuckers, and then you leave a series of clues. And only on their 18th birthday must they find you, and then, of course, physically attack you to prove their manliness. Oh, yeah. I want them to be, like, um, most very successful people have problems with their uh, father. So, of course, you're rolling the dice, yeah. whether it's going to be someone who can't have any personal relationships because they're so scarred, or maybe they're going to make some colorful paintings one day and then die early. And as I understand it, Dylan, your plan was to be a 70s dad, which is you'll just be nice to their kids, and somehow that forgives all the times you were mad drunk at events. Well, I will say this. I am told my wife this, and I will say it to everyone, is that I am. I was in bars. I, one of some of my earliest memories were being in bars, just be like where you can smoke inside, which now I guess yeah. is fucked up. But I still believe, like, you don't even, you can't even smoke inside anymore. Why aren't we bringing kids into bars, guys? I'm going to say the this. Fox no and Fiddle funny. should be, the, there should be ads for Fox and Fiddle in Canada where it's a guy going, oh, looks like I got to work out those chicken wings. You, co- you, you got my kid, right, Rick? And he's like, yeah, and then that's it. Fox and Fiddle. Yeah, that's totally right. And that, by the way, that Fox and Fiddle, the one I'm picturing is the Fox and Fiddle. I don't think is there anymore on, they used to be adjacent to King Street in downtown Toronto. Let me with Google a great, sm- great smoking patio, one of the best smoking patios in Toronto, in a in a town with excellent cigarette smoking locations. Get strap in for this, motherfuckers. Toronto, Ontario, Canada in the 2010s. I put it as top five. It's still places. there, but oh, I remember. You. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. It's still there. Very key though. The Fox and Fiddle John's talking about was on the second floor. There was two floors to it, and it had a sure. smoking patio. This Fox and Fiddle is on the uh, base level of a condo. No way you're smoking on a fucking rooftop there. I hate I hate that. I hate that so much. That's Dude, the worst that thing the I've ever best. heard in my entire life. That was the best show ever because you oh. didn't have to watch comedy. You did. And by the way, what was on stage most of the time was not comedy. It was either young comedians just at a stage of uh, Sunday night exhaustion drunk. Oh, and like, yeah. The amount of like crazy ass toronto 2009 gossip that was settled there the amount of people that refuse to answer to their nicknames at that show will stun you i've never been to a show where two separate people Uh declare oh here we go Uh what happened there what what do you think that face and smelling a man's crotch means that's what i like he means i shit you fucking bitch (laughs) Are you telling me, for, did we just make podcast history? First on, first live on air, <laughs> dumb. <laughs> we did it. But Dylan, our destiny is fulfilled. Nothing nothing comprises what we've been bringing to podcasting low podcast these, done this, though, yeah. this decade. The podcast is over. We just, a man shit live on our show. Every Anyone who is listening to right, this. A man. Yeah, you better fucking join the Patreon right now. <laughs> and, then, and guess what? You're all paying a thousand dollars a month, and you should be grateful. You'd be like, the, all of the DMs we should be getting going. I am sorry, I don't have the ability to give you more, he is but you currently are currently shitting. Like he's, yeah, that's right, that's right, that is right. <laughs> Patreon key, that's what we're calling it. Stop that, yeah. Aussie. Whoa, whoa, Aussie, was I just want to say everything? What happened? They talk. Tim Pool is the victim here. Whoa, Ozzy. Like, what? <laughs> I don't I mean, know how he did it, but it smells like Doritos. Book? I'm gonna put him on the I'm gonna put him on the couch with a cover so he doesn't shit through the bed like he did last time one sec. <laughs> I respect it so much. I gotta tell you, I don't um Dylan's uh Dylan's second son is pretty new to the world, but thus far, this kid is making the greatest first impression of anyone I've ever met in my entire life. He's showing up, he's shitting live on air, and he's staring at me. He seems really fun. He makes fun, cute baby noises. What is not to love? Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember when the show used to have a theme? And now we're basically just uh, every week we come here together to watch Dylan uh, uh, somehow still be alive and be that tired. It's really impressive. Well, this, is, 
Well, this is what I like about the show now is that like a lot of shows. I guess the internet now is like trying to seem casual while you're clearly not being casual. Um, oh, like a lot yeah. of these just hanging out podcasts where you got like sixty five thousand dollars worth of podcast equipment, and we are truly just two people trying to keep it together. One guy doing, I think, the worst version of babysitting. Like this will be visual. The, ne- never before when someone was in therapy do they have filmed footage of why they're oh. fucked up and then that is yeah. why yeah literally your son is going to be like i'll tell you why i'm this way uh my my dad and his weird nerd friend declared podcast over because i went bowel movement live on air as a two-month-old and guess what we will be in that therapy session we'll be drinking red bulls and we'll be like yeah and it was awesome and then the three of us are going to wedge that therapist and then yell, Young drools, Freud rules, TP's <laughs> car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Andrew Tate's going to look like a fucking simp lib next to what Ozzy comes up with. I'm going to say this right now about the entire Andrew Tate situation, which was, that has been the greatest. What's the Andrew like, Tate ever, situation? Is there the another? An, the, like, Andrew Tate was like, there's two sides to this story. And then the Romanian government, like, released the deposition where they're like, yeah, but it was a bunch of 14 and 15 year olds. And everyone was like, there are not two sides to this situation. Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, delete those videos. See ya. Like it's just oh, like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> so quickly everyone's like, uh, oh, good point. Like, and it's like, I don't know if you're also across like, apparently a bunch of right wing YouTubers have been getting money from the Russian government and they've got the receipts and it's just like, like it's well, yeah. Quite... I mean, remember RT? Remember you remember when RT uh, was filming? Uh, you, it, it, keep RT's fucking. Keep that fucking tone out of your mouth. You are looking at a former RT freelance employee, sir. Really? I, I, love I appeared Everyone on has... Sam Sam yeah. Delaney's news thing. Sam to our... Delaney. Well, we there knew who, who was who was the Andy Richter of Sam Delaney's news thing on RT. Um, Lee Camp. Lee Camp had Big the show. Big bad boy. Big bad boy. Bobby Mayer. Well, he doesn't want that out there, but Lee Camp had that show. <laughs> Remember Lee Camp was like on this weird I don't know who it is like now, like I guess now there would have been like a yeah. way for Lee Camp to have a podcast where he shoots from the hip and whatever, gets a big Patreon. But like back yeah. then, ten years ago there wasn't, so he just had to take money from the Russian government to do his version of the Daily Show where you just never made fun of Putin. And then there was a New York Times article where they were like, how come this guy never makes fun of Putin? And then he answered questions for some reason instead of giving no comment. He's like, well, there's he just doesn't do anything wrong. He's infallible. It's not my fault he's infallible. Yeah, like, it, like listen, if a guy can do a million push-ups, I'm not going to criticize him for any other thing he can do. He's just really good at push-ups, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, What's the deal with this guy only doing a couple one-handed push-ups? What are you, oh, like, he's 70? That's actually impressive. Here's my question. What's the deal with John Jones not getting in the ring with Putin? Because I think that that would be <laughs> the fight of the century. Him. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is amazing about Lee Camp, and what's interesting is this comedian kind of doesn't exist anymore, and we do not credit the internet for killing it, which is the performatively angry dude in, if it's not a turtleneck, it seems like a turtleneck, just really ruining the open mic. A, like, Lee Camp was a, like Lee Camp was very funny at times, but also would like put it in the ditch in terms of like doing polit- like doing two, four minutes of obs on Occupy Wall Street in 2013, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Jamie Kilstein, though, is the king worst of that? My God. Now a Christian fitness influencer. Fuck yeah, you fucking oh, soulless yeah, grifter. baby. Like, Lee Camp, I would say, is like Lee Camp is one of those guys that's like just super politically convicted and will just look the other way because he needs money to express his political convictions. Like, he'd be like, yes, in a way I took money from Putin, but in another way, I took money from capitalism. And you're like, all right, all right. Well, there's a guy who just got his views uh, on TikTok. And this is like, this is what the internet is now. It's like micro-influencers getting their version of like their their business that they have gets fucked over. But this guy um, basically made a video that was saying like, you have two choices to vote for president in the United States. You have... Donald Trump who loves the cops or the literal cop so it's like the left wing version is the cop and then um but he said it a lot more of a flippant and shitty way and then now his comments were just like 
And then instead of being like, sorry, I know what I can say, what I'm trying to say isn't explaining it. He just started doing TikToks, filming books and be like, see this book, this is a really good book if you read books. Maybe I you guys should this. just read books and then you'll understand. When basically, and then it's just black people, he's a white guy, that's just black people being like, you don't think a black woman as president is in any way a step forward. <laughs> and it's just him, and then it's just him fucking from books by the Black Panthers being like, listen, you just don't get it. I mean, so, I, um, I gotta tell you, I gotta say this, I yeah. on one hand, I hate that guy, and then on another different hand, I'm like, it, this like we, welcome to the Thunderdome. This is just like, yeah. this is just humanity, just pure, uncut, just like this. Hey, everyone can just let you know what they're thinking about while they're driving by themselves now. You know what I mean? Where yeah, it's just like, man. Woo! Like, why would you do that? This guy has 1.2 million followers. He hasn't lost anything because it's TikTok, and you know, TikTok just kind of goes by like, if people like your videos this week, then you get a lot of views, and if hey, you don't, look, they don't. Right? I'm not. Listen, I'm the CEO of TikTok. I'm not saying really? that it's. I'm not saying that I'm gonna be cool with a video that's just like, hey, look, I. I just think they should all die because they control the banks. But if a million people, bots or otherwise like that, I want it on my platform. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just for comments. And it's like if just people are posting shitty stuff anyway. Um, his name is Machino Dorito. His stuff's good. That is fucked. But it's like if you just make like funny sketches, but then also you're like a hardcore fucking I read four books and then I dropped out of college socialist then you people know that about you now you know what i mean like well here's what it is is people what i don't think people realize is a lot of people are going to be crystallized in their i played an acoustic guitar on the bed at a house party in college persona and that is <laughs> that's not who you ever want to be bed baby it is such a good like we're sitting you know exactly oh. who i'm talking we, the amount of these guys you and i while smoking cigarettes you want to on bed? a balcony while they were sitting crisscross legged with a fucking ponytail strumming what they think are the chords to sweet caroline oh fuck yeah like do you understand that people are going to apply for a job at the bank and then hr is going to google and go uh in um it says here in uh 2023 uh you um uh you you you, you made 400 tweets talking about how um Kyle Rittenhouse was the new Jesus and that you now like thick women because he likes thick women. Can you bring this intensity to stocks? You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, I think that there's... Uh, I remember someone I was friends with for a bit was saying that everyone's super online. She was like a teacher in high school and she was like, everyone's super online and all they talk about is how fucked up it is that they're all super online and they like need it. And everyone just has a super private account. So the only time, the only That's time so that would get funny. out would be if they fucked someone over, not or fucked someone over, or someone on their private account's a dick and they save it. It's not open. Like we, we are, we were the first on the internet. We're like, sure, everyone can look at it. Who gives a fuck? And then like people yeah. started losing their jobs and people need to know that this was yeah. my idea. I need either, them I to think, know. I think that generation, they're either making, like, if you're 20 years old, you're either making three videos a day and you study the algorithm like mm -hmm. it's a course or you don't have any online footprint. Yeah. Here's the thing that's also interesting. I like how people are treating being online, how you and I, speaking of smoking, treated smoking, because nothing smokers talk oh, yeah. about more is that this is bad, huh? We better quit. Three more I'm cigarettes, so though? Yeah. I'm so relaxed. Fuck, my eyes are... I'm so relaxed. My eyes are vibrating like a fucking hummingbird's wings. That's how relaxed. That's how chill I am. More coffee. But I, I will say this: how much direct sex results from social media from cigarettes? I'm gonna say it's a lot more veered on cigarettes. Direct sex? Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, I think it's a lot closer of a race than you're willing to admit, but I think you're correct. Yeah, I guess if you're just hossing it out, DMing people. You know, what I I'm always saying? forget about the people who are just like, "This girl's yeah. hot." I'm DMing her. I, I forget That's the about thing the, that we like, like. We that. we forget that sometimes the people we pretend to be do exist, and they're just like, "Nice buns, come to my bakery," and you're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I mean, that's a good line. You want some glaze for that cake? Yeah. Yeah, but nothing is quite as good as, "Hey, do you have uh, Belmonts? I have the cheap version of Belmonts. Did you know I'm sad?"
No, yeah. That's a oh. Point. Uh, what do you smoke? I also, man, that I remember just the amount of times I was a Canadian classic man, and I remember the amount of comedians that would be like, I prefer Du Maurier's, and I'd be like, well, I prefer if you go and buy your own cigarettes, you motherfucker. Canadian classics, I can't envision a difference between them and Du Maurier's other than Du Maurier's had that filter that was like I'll tell you hollow what the in is. the middle. The difference is about three buckaroonies, baby. Three to four buckaroonies. I no, I yeah. understand that. I'm just saying, like, why are Du Maurier's more expensive? You know I think it was I mean? just. I never I, smoked I, natives either. I, I, I certainly escaped did. With my throat, oh, you smoked natives. The, of course, I lived in Montreal. You couldn't. Uh, two oh, different yeah. comedians would go on monthly runs, fill up the That's trunk good. with plastic bags of cigarettes. The Monday open, Mike, my friend, twenty dollars. You got two hundred cigarettes. What am I? What am I? See, that's a what community. Am I, yeah. What am I afraid of a deal? That's not true. The one that's thing, though, a, that's a community. When they talk about stand up community, that's yeah. what a community does for each other. They hoard cigarettes. Oh my God! Speaking of overtly political comedians, then I remember this guy named Carl got up, and uh, and just and he just talked about all oh, the ringleaders. And I was just like, is he talking about the people that just, <laughs> he's talking about the guy that just sells the cigarettes because we all can't drive to the reservation? There's a lot of ringleaders who have cigarettes that I want. They're <laughs> so funny. I mean, man, like, I just, I've been going to a lot of open mics in LA and it's like a very different type of open mic crowd now. And I was like, man, where's, where's just the definitely wet, crazy guy? Where's the E? There's no wet, oh, no. crazy people. Does everyone have a social media strategy to open mics now? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when we did open mics, it was like, there's a lot of steps between me and then that guy who show, who's headlining a club. And now there isn't. Now it's like, you get four hot videos. There's some girl I saw That's where so she true. had a joke go viral about anime, and now she just fills rooms because she's... Like, weebs come it. out, dude. I'm going like, to say this right now. I really like it because so many people that suck have no power anymore. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's made my job a bit harder. But you know what's nice? 11 different people who I hate are now unemployed. And it's just like, all right, well, that's a tra <laughs> you know what? That's a trade-off I'm willing to make. People, don't, there, there's a thing in society where people are like, you got to avoid spite. It's like, that's not true. You got to put a positive spin on your spite. And then chef's kiss. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, wow. That's a good thing for a therapist to say or whatever. John, let's cut the buck and bullshit. It's 17 minutes in. Let's talk about what we came here to talk about. Um, Shitting or standing? It's standing, shitting, standing, standing, or, standing, or do you, you, okay, you stand well, to wipe or do you sit? Welcome. You, unfortunately, have just, you've brought a butter knife to a bazooka fight, my friend. The idea that you think exposing your shit ass to the open air is at all acceptable is a crime against your family, air, the earth, and our friendship. Sit down, put some toilet paper. I would prefer wet wipes, although the idea that they biodegrade or dis uh, all that sort of stuff has turned out to be totally false. It's to almost destroyed the plumbing of uh, London, England, because they're <laughs> all of their toilets don't have enough water, so it's just, you're just, lit it's like shitting into just enough water to make sure it's going to stink in there, baby. Oh, it's going to stink. Yeah, it's always weird, like, if anyone's taking a dump and North America versus uh, Europe. It's the difference. It's the difference. Seeing between a dump and, and half uh, half that much water is like, is crazy. But I mean, it's, I know it's better. It's clearly better for the environment, for my dump to be half out of the water, like some sort of dying fish. But it looks a lot better submerged. Here's what I here's what I think, John. I think that standing back up. I don't even know. I didn't even know this was a thing. I just thought girls sat and men stood, but. As I said, there's a Reddit, uh, this is, my thing is only on Reddit, it's 65% to 35%, 35% stand back up to wipe, 65% remain seated, and honestly, I thought it would be like 100% of women sit, and then it's 50-50 on men, but it's not, it's pretty much 6, it's 7 yeah. to 3 for men, for women, and 6 to 4 for men. That's because humans sit. And horses stand, you maniac. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm a thoroughbred. Don't no, forget. you're not. You're a, you're a donkey. I'm a big a donkey, mule. and uh, there is a proper way a to butt bull. clean. This is from Men's Health. Proper way to butt clean? You know that it's a it's an article based in medical science when they use the word butt in the headline. Hey, do you have honker cancer? <laughs> 
one here's Frosty Frosty on on X writes, "Who on earth wipes standing up? That's the behavior of an oddball." Yeah, who wrote this article? I love them. It's, it's this is from Mad Jack. This is insane. Hey, let's talk. Welcome to Men's Health. Ah, wacky Dave. All right, are you cleaning your butt while maintaining alphaness while being a bro? Well, make sure that your brown zone is clean, 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 so you can do it dirty, dirty, dirty. Go you want it? <laughs> when you're stuck in your ex wife's IG, you're gonna want to be standing. <laughs> Yeah, are you making stink while seeing who, which one of your former sexual partners are no longer maintaining keto? Well, you better be wiping your ass like a fucking sea biscuit. Any fucking squatters in here have to fucking join a prison gang because in prison men sit down to do that. In full society, you've turned me around. I'm now a stander for all things because guess what? We're ponies. I'm a pony boy. Dylan's a pony boy. Let's gallop. We're standing up yeah. for everything. Do not listen to this podcast if you sit. I've turned around. This is like Hulk Hogan joining the <laughs> NWO. It's the ultimate contrarian thing. No, I it's have not. an android and I stand back up when I. No, Dylan. The ultimate contrarian thing I'm going to say is Holocaust denial, but this is number three. Oh, it's God. Holocaust no, denial. Being a contrarian can be fun. You don't fucking just say. It's the HD, then it's the Android use, then it's <laughs> HD. <laughs> <laughs> the HD. Wait a minute. This like... is 1080 HD. It's oh, 1080 wow. Holocaust denial? Yes, anyway. Can you imagine you keep it, <laughs> you're at a computer command? And this screen is t puts it 1080 HD. There's 1,080 Holocaust deniers on that screen? Um, Here's something good. Every poll I look at is pretty much 65-35. Except for college humor, 44% people stood. Whoa. College Wait humor is the main standard. And that, honestly, for me, tracks. I am a college you. humor guy. I look like college humor the person, and uh, I stand. Yeah, you look like the kind of guy that found college humor. was like, I got me I better memorize these zingers and then drop them at parties. And like sitting, like, do you sit to pee? I don't actually sit to pee, but I have been telling people I sit to pee. That's, a, that's my new thing I'm doing in twenty. That's an old guy thing. They sit to pee. What? What old are you doing any old guy things? I got parts of my body now that are reasons I can't do things. That's my old guy thing. I can't my elbows. That is a very good like yeah, I am no longer young. I would say this. We're not old. This is some people say old and then you're like I'm 38 and then a third person who's fucking 68 is like go fuck yourself. Yeah, well fuck you. Why are you right? listening to a podcast, old man? You fucking ass. Well, fuck you. The, yeah, this so old guys you. listen to podcasts. I wonder if Shut Joe up. Rogan was like, put your head in the toilet and then your butt goes up and that's how you wipe. And people are like, okay. I mean, yeah, that's, that's he's not cool, at but... like, he's not at the influence he was at, but I do remember being in a gym and Joe Rogan saying, I lift with my socks off and then gave some fucking bullshit science thing. And then the next day in the gym, people had to be like, put your fucking shoes on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, also, it's very funny. It's very funny that it's interesting to see all those podcasters have reached a level of wealth that it's like the difference between living like living on Earth and living on the moon. But they have no awareness of some of the shit they say. It's like, oh, I got to tell you, my my ass is asleep because the private jet chair, it was too comfortable. I got to tell you, it was I I don't think I can stand. My legs are sore. From how relaxed my body was on that private jet flight, and you're like, "Am I? Why the fuck am I about to sit through a fucking advertisement for um, uh, AG24?" Yeah, I mean, it's also like at least when Oprah was running shit, she had a format and a theme also, song. At least, and I'm gonna say this: also when Oprah was running shit, I wasn't friends with those people. That's my main complaint. <laughs> it's nothing to be like ever i'm like no i just i don't to understand like every time there's a fucking pivot in that space i got three friends i gotta have a very tense lunchtime conversation with no the oprah space or rogan space rogan space but same guys that were also affected by the oprah space they were just sick they were sick a lot from school and you know prices rights only on in the morning this is what will happen when we're older there'll be like a non-binary version of joe rogan he'll be like dictating what a non-binary person does oh i can't fucking wait a right-wing non-binary person that's that's gonna be the <laughs> fucking 
dude. It's so fucking. Milo Yiannopoulos is a right wing gay person, and there'll be a right wing non binary person. And let me I am say and that. they them, and they them need to get on the other side of that border. My yeah, they. I know a thing or two about theys, and they are coming over here military age <laughs> to stage Dude, an invasion. A hundred percent. A guy who's non-binary warning you about other evil non-binary people. Hell yeah. Yeah. They. Yeah. Just it's like just the 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 word. Oh, I cannot wait. Oh, it's gonna be so sweet. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, I'm jacked for that, man. I want to fucking chest bump you right now. What a good riff. Um, let me say this. Let me speak on this. When it comes to sitting versus standing, aren't you concerned at all about the fact that you're just showing your shit ass to other parts of your bathroom? That's the other thing that's just like, let's cover the shit ass part of this. How solid are your shits that you're not worried about that? You just Are you logging it two times a day? I don't, I never thought, I'm not, I was never, I don't know. I truly have no idea. I had all these grand designs of looking this up from a cultural point no, of view of maybe no. it's a fucking thing it se- truly seems like arbitrary yeah i think maybe my i was like i didn't like you also didn't go to daycare you just were kind of like your baby sat by your grandparents i assumed it was like a weird wasp thing where they were like you only sit to shit and honestly half of the shit you should still be standing because sitting is for girls and then yeah. i wiped standing up while looking at the shit you just made to reclaim your masculinity and yelling take that you fuck to the toilet i do re- actually recall my grandfather saying something along the lines of look you sit down to wipe because if you stand up a german sniper is going to shoot you now be quiet that's good that i mean that honestly sit down eyes on the door i get yeah. that no whistling that reminds me of Tobias. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of you hung out in bars, some of my earliest memories were hanging out with my grandfather where he went down to what he called the club, which was actually just a community center on Richmond Road, and he gambled with four other business owners who have since all lost their businesses, and here's how I know. You shouldn't be running a laundromat and playing bridge with my grandfather for five hours every fucking afternoon. Like, I'm sorry. Like, people are like, yeah, there's no mom and pop businesses anymore. I was like, yeah, well, part of that was they were very inconsistent because it wasn't like a corporation that had like shareholders. It was like it was a guy who had a wife who he, let's say with me now, hated. Well, this is the thing I was I remember seeing like some guys drinking and smoking outside of a bar at like Everything. 3 p.m. And then I was like, from what we know about mental health, that's like a thing to aspire to now. They're not on their phones. They're fucking Look at this. hacking darts and being racist in public. It's like, yeah. yeah, they must be pretty happy. Like, yeah, gentlemen, way to live in the moment. You know what? They are they are criticizing. <laughs> they are. Yes, the amount of are... Portuguese people that are currently in Toronto. So it's in that mo in that moment. Yeah, they are they are centered. They are not thinking about the future. They are not trying to change the past. They're just they're just fucking. Yeah commenting on women's asses the women are looking back oh. at them disgusted and they're calling her a cunt and then that is living in the moment marcus aurelius himself would be actually upset that they didn't attack the woman for talking back because he was a man who lived in the roman empire and it would have been fucking great like those men nice rump and then she was like hey i get marcus aurelius would have been like why did the why did the pig know english <laughs> So can you tell me a bit more about Marcus Aurelius while I get Kleenex because I'm going to blow my nose? Very good. So Marcus Aurelius is uh, the father of Stoicism. Dylan, you practice Stoicism? Oh, the fact he walked away from the microphone like an alpha. I button. got recommended some Stoicism Instagram pages when I tried to relearn how to do a proper sit-up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, basically, so Stoicism is basically just, it's a... Um, it's a philosophy, uh, thought up by a, um, uh, a Roman emperor, uh, to let everyone know how to not be a pussy. Basically, Marcus Aurelius was the first Tate brother and he just showed up, slapped everyone in their goddamn face and let them know, uh, in this fucking house, you just don't go to the bathroom. doesn't matter about fucking standing or sitting for wiping. You're just not doing that. You just, you get in the sauna. It was so stoicism, it's all about like you can't affect <laughs> you don't the change. You just get in the sauna, let it yeah, drip no out of you. you. Yeah, you let it seep out of you because anything that comes out of your holes, that's womanly. Those are periods. Okay, 
Standing, sitting, this is whatever. Periods. What about yeah. lying down? Also, <laughs> oh, that's a week. Just face that would right be... on the bathroom floor. My yeah. whole body, including my naked dick, is on the bathroom floor, and I'm just guessing where the poo is. And then I, and then I no look, dunk it in the toilet. How dare you lie down? As you know, if you lie down, that makes you susceptible to a person of your same sex coming over and perhaps doing something that you turns out you like. Oh, sorry, I'm lying that's down a... on my back. What? That's even more dangerous. Because <laughs> what if it. you fart, which is the same as having a uh, a reflective thought, which, as you know, it goes against all tenets of alphaness. So yeah, stoicism, I got recommended. This is something, if you're a grown man and you want to be like, you know what, maybe I'm... There is certainly a proper way to do every exercise, and there is a proper way where you get the most... Uh, positives for your body because sometimes yeah. you do an exercise and you're just trying to get through it you're not really working the necessary parts of your body so if you want to look that up like let's let's relearn maybe i maybe my squats are bad then you're gonna get recommended pages who are like with no difference marcus aurelius is how i live my life even though i am an it professional yeah let me tell you this about me i I'm the assistant manager of a footlocker outlet that is closing. I am a committed adherent to stoicism. So you know what doesn't affect me? The fact that my girlfriend caught me cheating on her with a cam girl. Does it affect me that that cam girl and I were not technically in a relationship? I just called her my girlfriend in a way that my actual girlfriend did not like. Those decisions do not affect me. Those were the behaviors of others. Like, that's the sort of shit. Stoicism is the... The guy just told his wife to shut up very aggressively at the family barbecue and then is trying to somehow win the debate about that's not how you're supposed to talk to someone. But I I approach a situation with aggression, how they receive it, that's up to them. And you're like, what? No, fuck you. You know what I mean? One of those guys. Oh, the you mad bro people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you upset at the fact I took a shit bare-assed on the floor of the mall? I like to shit places. I mean, I remember I was at a party and a guy made a joke, something about like a perfect circle. And then another guy started talking about a perfect circle. And then a guy I was abbreviating. Yes. You are referring to the band, a perfect circle, correct? No, it was a pun on how there cannot be a perfect circle, which is what a perfect circle is an allusion to. And then a guy said, actually, there is a possibility. And then they started abbreviating quantum physics to just the word quantum. And then I remember just being like, I ain't. And then I just stole all their drinks. And I was yeah, like, something I needs to happen. I got to tell you, here. that really sounds like a time when I would start just knocking the drinks out of their hands. Dude, I was like, I just took their beer yeah. Like, who took their beer? And I'm like, I did. Yeah. You, I took it for I took it for Canada. Are you, yeah. Are you into quantum? And then someone else heard that and was like, a lesson needs to be taught, and I am the teacher, and ding ding, school is in session, maybe. No, no, this was real this this is real dialogue. You're acting like I don't know quantum, bro. I want the names of these. I want the names and the social I want to identity thieve these people. Me, That's how much fucking... I can Laker. Miller High Life? Just drinking oh, the just a... We were oh, 20. A he was Laker. A tall boy of Lake Court Ale? Mm. Oh, Lake Port. No, Laker was... I don't know if Lake Port's still around, but Laker was like, unless this is so cold, this tastes like dog shit. I have a question. And it's just, I don't party like the way I used to party, which is drink 14 beers in a park. Um, what are the, like... You can get eight of these for five bucks beers. That doesn't seem like that no exists idea. anymore. I think it's just vapes now. I think people are just like, yo, let's just get a fucking high nicotine vape. Two Zins, sit in the park, try and figure out why we our vision's blurred. Trying to get Nicoed on teen, bro. Though, uh, what's it? Seen a lot of land shark. Shot, no, no, we're not moving on from you want to get Nicoed on teen, Dylan. Yeah. Sometimes... I'm not sure about your commitment to the program, and then you bring it. You fucking bring it, my friend. Most of it is about trying to find an annoying way to say anything. But no, land shark. That's that's a cheap one now, which I, I like. The, what is land shark? Is that a nice it's beer? A beer. Nice cheap beer? I like that. 
Do you know that there's a beer in England called Neck Oil? And I don't know why, but I'm like, that That's sounds like good. you're that sounds like you're drinking lube. Are you drinking lube? Are you, I'm so I got dog on the thing that people have a whack with. <laughs> uh so last night my men's league softball team lost thirty five to five. The other team didn't and I'm not exaggerating here, didn't run past the third inning. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> they didn't run. What do you mean? Like well, they would hit the ball over strolled? everyone's head and they would walk. So second. you basically so you got space jammed is what you're saying. We got space jammed. Our second <laughs> baseman, very good man, completely fell in on himself. Like I've never seen someone just like collapse like that. <laughs> like, to the God. point where I was like, can I? Can I? Please, like, I don't fucking care. Do you know how fucking bad your day has to be going when they are giving you signals from the dugout during men leave stop softball? Kevin, Kevin. No, it Kevin. was. It's a very competitive league, and we got torched. <laughs> anyway, I had one you, of sip of Land oh, Shark, and then on. I would describe what my body said. <laughs> Why are you doing this? And it was like I've never had a drink of something and then felt just immediate indigestion. It's oh. like, you don't do this. It oh, was yeah. very funny. I was like, I, it would honestly have been better if it was like, uh, instead of drinking beer in the park, we're going to just have like some whiskey and I'll just drink whiskey. I, 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 would, I would probably feel better today than having the three land sharks that I did. I want you to know something. And I want you, if you next time to see me, I want you to bare face slap me for this. But I recently had two sips of a Mountain Dew and I totally know mm-hmm. what you're talking about. Because at first if I was like, Mountain Dew is good. And then right away, my brain was like, it is not. What are we doing? And then while I, was doing, I was like, I don't know. but I'm not, no. And then I was like, because you got to remember, Mountain Dew here is not like Mountain Dew in Canada. Mountain Dew here is like, yo, Red Bull, I'll see you in hell. Let's get jacked. I, went, I recently had, there's a soda pop in Toronto area. I don't know if it's anywhere else in the world called Brio. Oh, fuck. And it's, it's like a bitter tasting thing. Yeah. It tastes like the love the step your stepdad has for the kids that are not his. Ooh, that feels like obligation. <laughs> um, but someone was saying like you make brio taste better. You do all these things, and I was like, well, you could just apply those things to something you already like and make it much better. I like, mean, you, you could also like... just not order brio. It's also that thing of like, there's certain things specifically about Toronto. That's because... a contrarian drink. That is the oh, state in the white. It's also pops. if you have a brio. Also, Toronto. It's just so weird to be like, why are you having a soda that's only made here in Toronto? Because uh, I, uh, I really like hanging around Little Italy. You know, one of those guys that refers to Toronto Little Italy, and you're like, it's not a. That's not a place. You can't. It's two separate block areas that have some flags on the fucking um, uh, poles. Suck me off. Go fuck yourself. I will say this, brio. Every time you have one, you think. This, this isn't going to taste like it just did. The can looks delicious. It looks like an oh, old does. Pepsi can. It looks really refreshing, and it is it not. Looks, it looks, I don't know if there's anything on Earth that looks better and tastes worse than Brio. Yeah, like, kitty litter is a better quencher of thirst than Brio, and kitty litter at least advertises how unrefreshing this would be to drink. While Brio, you're like, oh, this walk through the desert was worth it now that I have this refreshing... What? What did I do to Italy? Was this was this Mussolini's last revenge? Yeah. I'm gonna get those fuckers in Toronto, all those wheat barons and pig owners in Toronto. I'm going to unleash the weirdest tasting thing on one neighborhood. Yeah, the disgusting Sicilians have once again cucked us. That's right, and ironically, uh, they will be doing it in a neighborhood mostly populated by Portuguese people. <laughs> Portuguese, as one man once said, the uh, the working man's Italian, you know? I What is an Italian but a pretentious Portuguese? I mean, I'm going to say this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Portugal Portugal is the uh, best country to visit in Europe. All other countries eat my butt. And you want to know how they accomplish this? Two ways. First way, everything just comes with a pastry. That end of argument. <laughs> I have a coffee. Here's a tart. Fuck yeah. Here's a postcard. Have a tart. Yeah. Uh, and everything's slightly uphill. You're burning those cows, baby. That butt's oh, tight. Oh, yeah. Cobble Everyone, stones. I remember when I went to... What native Portuguese music I was, gonna, was I going to hear? Some 41. 
Oh Fuck yeah, you. baby. I love. I just. I love. Once you get out of what I like to call, like I like to call historical Europe. So you're out of your. You're away from your. Your England, your Scotland, your Ireland, your France. You know what I mean. You're getting into your Spains. You're getting into your Portugal's. You know, you're getting into your Italy's, your Greece's, where you're just like. This guy is supposedly my tour guide. He is just playing Van Halen songs and asking me which ones I like. And you want to know what? This is the best tour of an island I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like, <laughs> yeah, tour of, of countries... Portugal for places yeah. where Van Halen was. Yeah, I'm going to do a tour with this guy. He is wearing a crop top. He has just asked me for three cigarettes. We are going to have cigarettes. And I do not think that this boat has a motor. Woo! That is another thing. Like, Europe is worse because they had the rolly cigarettes. I couldn't believe it. I smoked You're those wrong. for so long. I, like, they hurt my body. Rolly cigarettes are great. What do you got against rolly cigarettes? They're bad. You're They're... wrong. It's so fun. It's an activity, and you smoke, and then it hurts your lungs more than anything ever has. Which ones were you smoking? I also feel like, because let's, oh. you have to frame everybody. Dylan was at his most dumpster baby at the time he was living in England, rolling cigarettes. So it's very possible like him and two other guys just mulch some leaves and then just <laughs> sprinkle some nicotine patches over top of it. No, I'd smoke straights. I smoke straights quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's just. Which is how you know you're in a bad place where you have a name for real cigarettes. Oh, I have a nickname for it. I mean, I, rem it's, I remember a Scottish guy called them factories. And I was like, whoa. Factories? Give me one of them factories. You can't, yeah, you can't make it seem like the fucking normal thing. Yeah, stop looking down, yeah, but stop looking down at me with your, your cigarette that was made in a factory, you fat cat. Oh, Dylan's going for a handgun. I think, that, I think he's, about to, um, he's about to do what that uh, Philadelphia politician did uh, when he was discovered of corruption. If only I could remember his name, this would be a much funnier bit. Did he jack off? No, but I will. <laughs> now you gotta watch this. Woo! Did that work? Nope. Nope. If anything, John, made it worse. I wait. Yes, still. Let's say we'll do eight more minutes. John, spit, spit something real, and then we'll record another one immediately after this, based on listener suggestions. Be speak on this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before we continue, let me just say this, Dylan. How often, as a man who lived in Europe, let's let's merge Europe and toilets. The one thing that I will never understand, but continue to question, is that in North America, every time I walk into a public bathroom, do you know what I notice? The floor is dry. I don't know why. Just dry. It's a dry floor. All of Europe, your bathrooms are wet. Are you pissing on the floor? That's, that's what we're about to talk. Because what the hell is going on? North America. European on the floor. Oh. There you go. He did it. He fucking did it, everybody. Stand as, up. As the video just goes randomly in and out of focus. This is yeah, what you yeah, signed yeah. up for. Yeah, guys. You signed up for us. Welcome. Guess what? Everyone else's podcast does not reference David Lynch's Twin Peaks by, you know, each one of the bits is consciously or unconsciously affected by the technical problems. Is it something we're doing on purpose to make you think about the foul... The, uh, the fallibility of life, it is not. You know what I mean? Hold on. Is it playing? Speak on this. That's how you know it's good. Uh, John. Hold up. Yes, sir. It's done now. I think we've reached our natural end. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back next time uh, with Viva Deez Nuts requested top five albums of all time. YOLO. Oh, all time as in what? Like our top five or just top five? Yeah. Like, great. See you in, see in a minute. Our top five. It's not going to be good. Oh, it's gonna be bad. All of mine are, are all of mine upset. are pink albums, and none of the popular ones. <laughs> Number one album, Pink's <laughs> rare like side. One, one of those people who really liked Pink. That's. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we think about Pink's, those people who are like, Pink's "Fuck it, I'm putting my shit behind Pink." Oh yeah, that's yeah. You know what I'm looking for? I like Lady Gaga, but just a bit more suburban. You know what I mean? Like, what's this song? It's about heartbreak and how he's got a little dick. <laughs> I remember I remember someone uh was against was against geez. Uh was they were with their uh former sorry. They got divorced and then I was like, Oh sorry about that and I said and then they said, It's fine. 
I still got a badass pink song with my walking down the aisle music. And I just thought that makes it worse, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Okay, you're in denial about things that don't wor- aren't worth that mental energy. But, but, oh, but, dude, the fact that her ex-husband probably is like, yeah, and my ex-wife came down the aisle to pink, and then everyone goes, yeah. ugh. Joe, <laughs> you know fucked up it is that my ex-wife walked down the aisle to the pink song that I fucked a stripper to at my bachelor party <laughs> for only $850? Do you understand? But I'm just sitting there being like, what a deal that was. 400 to the stripper and another 400 because they hacked into my credit card and took the money, but I couldn't query the charges because that was the old credit cards in my wife's name. But I look at the statement. One thing leads to another. Yeah, it's a studio apartment, but I like it. Hey, can I tell you, ask you this question? Yes, you can. What would you say is someone that was really, really on your side? Um... During the breakup of your, like, to an 80s level of your divorce. By which I mean, like, you were like, yeah, it didn't work out. And then they were like, she was a cunt. (laughs) And you're like, no. It just, we weren't, it was the wrong time in our lives. I cared about her very much, but it didn't end up working out. I'm like, sounds like that bitch fucked your dad. And you're like, once again, none of this. It was very not, like... And everyone was like the nicest. They were just like, man, I'm so sorry. It did not work out. Uh, and it was very funny. And then people would ask like, why? And like, just everyone's like, oh yeah, it was just all like, yeah, no, no, no. All, all of my friends turned out to be real betas. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the problem is I, I figured it would be one of your dad's friends was old school and be like, she was a bitch. She should hit her with a car. You know, a bunch of people were like, And this was more just, uh, this was just like their experience. And, uh, it was just like, maybe get a lawyer right now. And I was like, no, that I'm not going to do that. What was very funny about the divorce, which was where all the aggression came out was I, you now know what people think of divorce from movies because of what people's fears would be. So I didn't get, I got like a lot of like understanding compassion in the moment. And then you would just get like a nervous text message at three o'clock in the morning, mid pandemic from someone that would be like. What if they take all your savings and also some of some of that inheritance that you're getting from my aunt Berta? And you're like, okay, I think this is about you. Yeah. Did you have any secret like, accounts? Like the other, this is again, I've said this a million the times. The secret accounts thing. Well, because they're thinking like, you're divorcing my ex-wife. When in reality, that's no, exactly no, it. That's your ex-wife loves the mall. My ex-wife knits her own socks. Yeah, like it's also that that's exact. You have hit the nail on the head. Is when you are divorced, everyone thinks you're going through what their divorce will be. So it's, they're like, so they are prepared for their situation. It was like, if I, everyone should get divorced for no other reason than you get such a window into everyone in your life's relationships that you get no other time. Yeah, it's a real catcher in the rye moment. I see your lies. I'm holding. A lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. No, it's Dylan. Dylan, Dylan like had no issue. Dylan was great. He was like, you all right? And a couple of times I was not all right. And he just called and we talked about inane, weird, minutia shit. And uh, yeah, that was fine. Yeah, I'm not going to use my fucking, here's my favorite thing about any millennial. I don't know if this does to Gen Z. I shouldn't say it along generation lines. That's honestly one of my pet peeves, but it makes things easier to understand. Anyway, yeah. every millennial in a way that every baby boomer thinks that they're also in the stock market, thinks that they're a fucking psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. Because they yeah. just, like, watched Ally McBeal in grade eight, and they're like, I fucking got, even though Ally McBeal was a psychiatrist, but you get it. I saw I Sopranos a couple oh. times. I know your dad's, you're bad because your dad murdered your son or whatever. You are, you are 100% correct. And a couple of, because I have some bats in the old Balfrey at this point. Listen, you don't, uh, you don't almost die in how many bicycle accidents I've almost died in without, you know, having a couple of times where you wake up in the middle of the night. And that is, it's really fun because people really want to give you advice on how to handle it up to and including one guy. I'm pretty sure misunderstood a vice documentary about homeless veterans and told me after I was doing a bit about PTSD in Winnipeg, he came up and he went. As I understand it, you should have two whiskeys a night. Really settles down the demons. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, that's how a family annihilator talks. <laughs> <laughs> family annihilator is a fucking sick thing. John, comments on how that's one of your goals. Dylan, if you... 
I would love a Dylan got snap would be great because here's what it's going to be is it's just going to be you're just going to disappear and one day I'm going to postcard I'm going to get a postcard from a very ripped man with a big beard living in like the most solitary he lives all he has is the UFC package and a hut and he eats coconuts and he talks to nobody like that's where you'll just be you'll be untrackable because it'll just with well, oh, well, you'll be very trackable because it's like he lives on an oil derrick. It's the, uh, for some reason, he has a direct TV satellite dish from the 90s. He's only watching UFC events from the middle 2000s. On that island, George St. Pierre never retired and also was not Vaseline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No Vas, baby, just lube. Thank you guys so much for listening. Go, if you're with somebody, spice it up. Get divorced. Goodbye. Yeah, if you're with someone, even if you love them, turn to them and go, it's over. See how they react. Gauge that if you want to stay or not. You know what I mean? There you go. Scream curveball at them or just go opposite day, but make sure they're crying first. Goodbye. We're getting divorced. Opposite day. <laughs>